here in Barcelona, uh, Spain. Uh, we're at ESTRO, so it's the European Society of Therapeutic Radiation Oncology. Uh, and so it's all about radiation therapy. Um, so, so I'm happy to be here, happy to be talking to you, and finally meeting after quite some time. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm honored and humbled, uh, and it's been a privilege. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. I started Cancer Geek around 2004-2005 uh, and the reason why I started it back then was I found that patients were very sort of confused about what cancer was, what radiation therapy was, what chemotherapy was, and who the physicians were. And so I took it upon myself just to be very simplistic in educating and sharing what common simple definitions are and getting rid of the medical jargon and actually just using natural language like we would you know we'd talk to our family and our friends um, and through the years it's evolved um, you know as I said I think initially I started it because I wanted to educate patients and people in communities about cancer and since that time, it's evolved into more topics about just all of healthcare, from radiology, pathology, to digital health, to smoking cessation, to whatever the hot topic is of the week. Just sharing sort of my point of view and my observations, but doing it in a way that everyone can talk about and anyone can relate to. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm honored and humbled, uh, and it's been a privilege. Thank you. That's great. To me, I think we're going through another evolution. Um, I think if we think back to the classic Norman Rockwell picture where you see a physician and he's with a patient and it was really about that dialogue and, and that interaction. But the problem is, is healthcare did the exact same thing as everyone else in the, the industrialized world did. They took the Henry Ford model and they industrialized healthcare. And so our hospitals really became merely just factories. So much so that we've got physicians that are more worried about their productivity and RVUs and and the number of procedures that they're doing versus actually being able to have the time to have a dialogue and actually understand it's not just Mrs. Smith, but Mrs. Smith has a first name and she maybe, you know, lost a relative recently. She's got two children. She works, you know, one job during the day. She works part-time on the weekends because she's trying to, to make ends meet. And so I think we're at this you know, transition point again, where we've got all of this technology and we need to start to use it so that the technology doesn't control our physicians, but our physicians can use technology to enable them to get back to having that dialogue and that interpersonal relationship with patients so that you don't just see the patient in front of you, but you see me, Andy DeLeo, as the person who I've got expectations to to, to meet on this journey inside of healthcare. And so that's what I'm really like hoping for and what I encourage. And most importantly, that's what I'm really conversing with physicians today about is, is that they need to step out of the dark and into the light and take this opportunity to, to get back to their why, which is impacting the lives of, of people as patients. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm honored and humbled uh, and it's been a privilege. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. So, 
That's a great question about digital health. Um, and there's multiple layers to, to the answer. I think there's a lot of hype around digital health. I think the reality is, is that consumers, we're in a always on, always access, uh, on demand life. The problem is, is that hasn't gotten inside of healthcare. So we're starting to see some of that with uh, telehealth and telepresence, doctors on demand, you've got apps that can do stuff. But the problem still is, is that there's still this digital divide. And that digital divide kind of means a couple of different things. One, you've got some communities that just don't have access to those digital tools. You've got a digital divide inside of healthcare where, you know, at least in the U.S., we hide behind HIPAA. Uh, in other parts of the world, maybe we hide behind PHI laws. And because of that, there's not this, this interconnectivity between your provider and the patient. And so as much as we want to say digital health is going to connect all of us, it's actually disconnected us in, in ways that we hadn't imagined. I think the, the hope and the promise is, is that we can learn from outside of healthcare to drive that sort of connectedness and that ability to respond, connect, talk, communicate. Um, and that's, that's my great promise because I truly believe if we use technology to enable personalized connections that we get back to the way healthcare was meant to always be and it's about a patient and a physician connecting at the end of one. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm honored and humbled uh, and it's been a privilege. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. GFHC, uh, better known as uh, Good Fucking Healthcare, um, is exactly that. It's, it started out as a pledge where we wanted patients and physicians to actually take back leadership of healthcare and saying, you know what, we're not going to live by the productivity and the manufacturing process and, and methodologies. We're actually going to go back to what healthcare and medicine was meant to be. To my why as a physician, I want to impact people as patients, and my why as a patient is that I want to know why I feel this way and how to get better. And so I said, let's, let's create a pledge. And if you're a physician, sign your name, uh, take a picture, tweet it out, same thing with patients. Um, and you know, it's, there, there truly is a difference between good healthcare and good fucking healthcare. And I think what all of us truly want is GFHC, which is the, the, the good fucking healthcare. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm honored and humbled, uh, and it's been a privilege. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Yes, I, I would love it. Uh, please uh, promote, uh, tweet us, Instagram, uh, hashtag GFHC. Um, so that way, you know, for those of you that don't want to swear publicly, um, it's a clean version. Uh, there's pledges out there, so I'll make sure that they're uh, out and available for people to download and sign if they want to. Um, and yes, please connect uh, with me in, in any form that you prefer. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm honored and humbled. Uh, and it's been a privilege. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. As a patient, the first thing that I want is good fucking health care. As a patient, what that means is that we need to build trust. As a patient, the way that I want healthcare to build trust with me is to manage the time on my expectations, to have a transparent conversation, 
and to help me in my transitions at, of care. As a patient, I want to be able to have a dialogue between a physician and myself. And as a patient, I want you to help me understand point A and point B in my healthcare patient. And as a patient, I want you to meet expectations based on my time. As a patient, if healthcare can do all of that, you will deliver to me, your patient, good fucking healthcare. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm honored and humbled, uh, and it's been a privilege. Thank you. Thank you. That's great.